Before we take a look at the sequencer, let's take a look at sound generation. As mentioned earlier, each track contains one sound such as a kick or snare. This sound, however, can be made up of three different layered sounds. Click on a track's generator page icon to open it. The central display now shows a sound generator edit area. This consists of the track sequencer lane at the top and a sound generator area beneath. We'll take a more detailed look at the track and its controls later, but for now, we'll just take a look at the generator browser. I mentioned generator presets, and this is where they access from. Unlike global presets, which also contain full kits and patterns, these just contain individual track sound presets. Click on the browser icon to reveal it, and it's similar to the global preset browser. Presets are organized into categories, which can be created as needed by clicking on the plus icon. Click a category name to reveal the presets within that category. Click on the save button to save any sound creations as new presets, and the delete button can be used to delete presets or categories. But as with the global presets, the category must be empty before it can be deleted. Remember, category and preset deletion cannot be undone. Use the Preview Track button to listen to the currently selected preset. There are three identical sound generators per track, each accessed by clicking on the Expand View icon to the left. These can be used to layer up to three separate sounds to produce the required track sound. This preset uses two of the three, one for a sample sound, the other synth generated. The display will depend on the generator type selected from the drop down at the top. If it's none, the display will be blank. Synth is a dual oscillator synth and displays the oscillator tabs as well as envelope and various filter tabs. Sample is a one shot sample player that also has the same envelope and filter tabs as well as a sample edit area. Let's take a look at this first. At the top, we find the sample browser from where any compatible samples in your Break Tweaker library can be found. The sample needs to be in either the WAV or AIFF format. There are also up down icons for stepping through samples and a load sample icon for loading samples that are on your file system but not in the Break Tweaker library. Discover helps you to find similar sounding samples on the web. This feature only works with factory samples and obviously requires an internet connection and needs to be enabled, which can be done from here or the options dialog. Once loaded, the sample is displayed as a waveform in the player. Here, trim points can be set several ways and this is true for most parameters within Break Tweaker. Either enter a figure numerically as a sample value in the start and end displays and you double click to access that. Or you can click drag left or right over the numeric values and hold down the control key if fine adjustment is required. Alternatively, click drag the trim start and end points above the display. Once these trim points are set, only the section between them is played back. Click on the preview button or press the corresponding MIDI note on your controller to hear how it sounds. Remember, Track 1 is C1, Track 2 C sharp 1, and so on. If you want to hear a combination of generators other than all three, or one in isolation from the other two, use the solo icons at the top of the relevant generators. The trim points can be used to change how the basic sample sounds, removing the attack perhaps to just use the decay phase. The waveform display can be zoomed using the zoom in and out icons or the mouse wheel while the cursor is over the display. It can also be scrolled using the sample ruler at the bottom. How a sample is played back is controlled by the playback mode control. Forward plays it normally. Reverse plays it backwards. Forward reverse plays it normally once and then immediately backwards. Reverse forward plays it backwards and then immediately forwards. Click the loop button to loop between the start and end trim points subject to the playback mode. 
click and hold the preview button to hear how that sounds while continuously looping. Once looping is enabled, it's possible to set a crossfade between the start and end points. This is expressed as a sample figure and can be set by left click and dragging over the figure, right to increase, left to decrease. The waveform displays the crossfades accordingly. Alternatively, to set a precise figure, double click and enter it numerically. Before moving on to the sound generator controls common to both samples and synth, Let's look at the synth type generator first. Selected by choosing the option from the drop down. This is a dual wavetable type synth with individual control over both oscillators. Wavetables are digitally sampled audio sounds that can be used to create anything from simple to very complex sounds. The oscillator is selected by clicking on its tab. Its controls and parameters are independent of each other. For example, one oscillator can play a D while the other plays an A. The controls are identical though, so we'll just be concentrating on one of them. The synth has four synthesis modes set using the controls to the right of the tabs. In the off position, only oscillator 1, which is the carrier wave, will sound. The four modes are additive, ring, amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. Additive mixes the two oscillator sounds together to create a more complex sound than it's possible with just the one oscillator. Ring creates a metallic type sound. The first oscillator, known as the carrier, has its signal multiplied by oscillator 2, which is the modulator. The resulting sound is two new frequencies based on oscillator 1, but created by the interaction of oscillator 2. Amplitude modulation changes the amplitude of the carrier wave, therefore adjusting its volume. Similar to ring modulation, it still has two frequencies created by the interaction of the modulating waves, but this time, the original carrier signal is also audible. Frequency modulation changes the carrier wave's frequency, resulting in a distorted or gritty sound. How much depends on the gain level of the modulating wave. The individual wavetables are loaded from the drop down selector toward the top of the wave display area. Each wavetable consists of two or more wavetables, and the interpolation between them can be adjusted using the shape control in the form of a slider underneath the graphic. This control can be modulated using a pair of modulation sources, which can be any of the four available envelopes or four LFOs. These AHDSR envelopes and LFOs have their own section across to the right, and we'll take a closer look at them shortly. Once an envelope or LFO modulator has been selected, it's possible to select start and end points for the range to be modulated. Double click on either the start or end points to lock the range, which can then be moved as needed. Double click on either again to allow adjustment. The lock and unlock options are also found in the right click menu, as are options to flip the start and end points, clear modulation and set to full range. Now let's take a look at the remaining controls in this display that are common to both the sample and synth generators we've just looked at. 